Many of you guys already realize that in the past I've owned a 1986 Cadillac Fleetwood Brougham. Well, I have an update on it and it's rather unfortunate and it teaches a good life lesson too. So, without further ado, let's roll through some photos of the car when I first owned it. And this was taken in around 2017. You can see the side profile, note the damage. And note the, the little sticker here in the back with the plane on it. It's hardly visible by the Hawk. Anyways, this was my first car that I've ever owned. I got it when I was 14 years old and I was obsessed with land yachts. So it really meant a lot to me that I could have one of these as my own. I drove it around to high school. I thought I was a king. I learned how to drive in it. And, it, you know, you, you make memories and things like these, right? And naturally, when my parents made me sell it uh, when it was time to get a new car, right? I was extremely upset. And I made sure to write down the VIN number so I could constantly keep on Googling it. And again, unfortunately, due to this Googling of the VIN, I found out what really happened to my car after it's sold. So you can see here all the interior pieces, everything looks nice really was a nice car. The person I bought it from previously also loved this thing, and it, he took very good care of it, had new belts, new everything. You can see how clean the interior was. This was a perfectly running car. I normally took it on many of my own long trips, no problem, beautiful car, people gave thumbs up, and I thought it would do the same. I thought someone else would pick it up. Look, 91,000 miles when I sold it. Transmission shifted like a dream, smooth. Engine cranked every time. Winter, summer, didn't matter. Car drove like a dream. And then here I am on the internet. I googled the VIN and look what came up this time. Hol Hollanderparts.com. That was never here before. I'm like, uh-oh, that can't be good. Why is my VIN coming up to uh, parts? You know, And look at this. There's my car. When I saw this, I, I kid you not, I had to step away from the computer for a few minutes because this just, it hurt so bad. And you can see here, it was acquired last year. So this car's been sitting here in Englewood. There's the address for over a year now. So, almost over a year. And it still hurts just to even see these pictures again for this video. You can see the same damage in the front. And we're going to go to the pictures here. You can see it's it's a lot more roughed up. Probably been handled by a forklift. This car is junked now. Oh boy. Yeah, it's, it's in really, really rough shape. All the plastic is ripped up. Funny fact, that black piece in the back I actually fixed with my fodder. You can see that the plain sticker is still on there. If you go back to earlier in the video, I put that on there myself when I was in high school. Yeah, those same rust spots. Everything is the same just as when I had it. And you know what? It just teaches you that things in life are not permanent, right? Your pride and joy to someone else may just be junk. And what more than likely happened was that this car went to the auction, like most of these cars do, and it ended up being purchased by a pick and pull. And what are you going to do? Your pride and joy becomes someone else's junk pile for pick and pull. Look, they just throw papers in there and cups. It's junk to someone. Look at that, 98,000 miles. I sold this car with 91,000. It was hardly driven, went straight to a pick and pull. And what are you going to do, right? It's just, it teaches you, uh, appreciate what you have now, because you really don't know what's going to happen in the future. This car is done for, I'm never going get, to get it again, I'm never going to drive it again. And you got to move on. What are you going to do? It really hurts, but you know what? It's life. Alright guys, you know what? Thanks for watching and I'm gonna just take this in for a little bit. Take care. Stay safe.